It's great to be back. I missed you guys. I had a great time with the grandkids, but they wore me the heck out. It's mm. taken me two days to get back at it. Mm. <sighs> Which, back at it, I'll tell you right now, um, Sunday, I'm going to move Sunday to Monday. I'm sorry, but I, I just got message that there's across the bay, there's a reunion, a high school reunion of my friends and stuff. And I don't know if I'll make it back. It's an hour to their house. And yeah, so it's over in, on Day Island, which probably not too far from Larry and um, um, Angie, but just knowing. So I'm going to, instead of Sunday, we'll do Monday next for this coming week. Heads up. All right. Um, Tamara has a channel. Yay. Oh, that's cool. I have to go find it. Let's see. Ba, 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 is it? What's it called? Oh, why would, why is that there? Why is that there, Tamara? Uh, on YouTube. Wrong spot. So, Tamara, what's the name of the channel? Or Linda put it in. Uh, there's Janice. Hi, everybody. And Linda's there. Um... Is it called Tam's Art? T A M C A R T. There it is. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm already subscribed. <laughs> I I'm already subscribed. That's, that's what I get. Oh my gosh. Uh, I've been too chicken to do, she says. Tamara says. And I, I'm going to read this, move this over here so you can. I've been too check in to do anything about putting something on my channel. I was just told just recently, but what have you got to lose? <laughs> exactly. Really. You know, you can always click on the thing that says hold all comments. <laughs> if you don't want to hear what people have to say, that you don't you don't have to. But always check the one that says hold inappropriate, but yes. I think it's going to be great. I'm excited to see your stuff up there. Um, yep. And then there is Linda and Janice. Janice, thank you for your comment. I appreciate it. Um, I, <laughs> I think, who was it that I saw I, last night? Well, I did it last night. I did the podcast last night and I, I put it up for this morning. So Tamara saw it this morning and I did another one because I missed last Saturday doing my podcast because it was Rook's fifth birthday. Oh my gosh, those kids. Um, anyway, here we are. Monday is good. Thank you, Linda. Um, it was it was a delight. We, we went down and drove down to Brownsville first, uh, in Oregon where, um, Aunt Bryn used to have her uh, Airbnb and now it's an event space. And I changed out all the photos there and put some different ones up and so changed the whole gallery wall. <clears throat> Sorry, drinking water. And so then we, we stayed there that night rather than Friday, just dump into their house. Cause, uh, it, they just had some stuff going on. So Saturday, we went down to their house, helped get the kids ready to go to the birthday party. Then we went and picked up the pizza for that. And the birthday party was at uh, a swim club. And so the kids could go swimming. We had a nice outdoor area for the adults and everybody to sit at and kids and get come back. And it, very, it was a lot of fun. Um, a, it was at a, a swim and tennis club so that there were lifeguards and everything and nobody had to worry. <sighs> then we watched the kids 
that night, Saturday night, so Bryn and Danny could go out for a date night and have some fun with their friends. And then on Sunday, Bob and I drove them to Florence, Oregon, to Florence, to the coast, which is about an hour and 15 minutes, and we went crawling on the sand dunes, which if you follow my Instagram, you might have seen an uh, Instagram, and I... Uh, that I did of them and it was, it was just too cute it was we had so much fun just running up and down the dunes and playing out on the beach and they were rolling and crashing and they crashed in the car on the way back and then um we stayed with them that night and then Bob and I drove home on Monday and it was it was a great weekend but boy huh, I was tired when I got back it took me a couple days to reboot so um Oh, they, I'm glad you like them, Linda. Thank you. Yay. Yay. I just, they're just kind of, uh, it's like I said, they're those little giant things. There's things I hear. There's things that somebody says to me or that an impression I get or a podcast that I listen to and it's something in it causes me to think. And <clears throat> I'm trying to get better at processing that information. And this is a way for me to do that. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> Linda says, she says, I'm trying to practice talking less so far. I'm not winning. <laughs> well, my, my goal is to keep them like as close to 10 minutes or less as possible and to do them in one take. So, so far, each one I've done has only been one take. I haven't paused the recording and started over. I've just started and gone. <clears throat> and then last night's was just over 10 minutes, 10 minutes and 20 seconds or something like that. <sighs> so part of the thing, what I do is when I'm driving someplace in the car and I get an idea, I hit, I say, Hey Siri, you know, oh, she's better not. No, I better not say, Hey, cause she's probably sitting right here and we'll get into the thing and say something to me and I'll say, take a note on this and have it say, and so I'll just do it by recording. And then I go back and look at those notes and think, oh, okay, that's what I was talking about. That's what I'm doing. But <clears throat> on to new things. Um, when I was down with the kids, I went through their books <laughs> and I found three books to get two tonight. Maybe. Yeah. Two tonight. Maybe three. I'll see two. Cause the other one's longer. Um, two that were books that I got for Bryn when she was little, they're signed for her and they're by Northwest authors. And, um, one of them is by John Frank and I think he passed away, uh, several years ago. He used to live in Redmond and the illustrator is a guy named um, G. Brian Cross, Karras, and he is a children's author and illustrator. He was born in Connecticut in 1957, uh, graduating from Pierre School of Art. He worked as greeting card artist. Yeah. And a commercial illustrator, Home on the Bayou, a Boston Globe Horn Book Honor, was his first illustrated book. So he's uh, still, and he's done some other ones, but this is, this is the book he did. This, um, this one is called the first one. I, I okay. <laughs> that was my kind of like blurb of stop, pause, rewind. The thing that I said at the beginning for this thing was that words take shape. And both the author and the illustrators of these used the text as a way to enhance and illustrate the story. They expanded the text in such a way that the words have shapes at times and add to the telling of it. 
and it's just really fun. This first one is, is hilarious, and I'm going to read it first after I get another drink of water because it might take a little bit of <clears throat> sound effects. So this first book is called Odds and Ends Alby. Yeah, let's get to your here and then we'll get a picture for oh I know what I needed um, I need a camera overlay let's see uh, camera seat nope not there I don't need that I need um, a camera overlay I forgot to grab this give me half a second uh, phone camera there we go there oh that's too big way too big of me what do you think of that? There we go. See, I needed a little one, and I gotta put this right kind of here. Oh, scoot that back. I know where it's supposed to go. It's supposed to go right here. And then I can read the story and see you guys. Yay! Make it smaller. There we go. Okay, odds and ends, Albie. Yay. Story by John Frank. Pictures by G. Brian Karras. Says to Bryn, best wishes, John Frank. Uh, boy, I don't know when was this published. When did I get this for her? I love the illustrations that, that uh, Brian Karras did. It's that really kind of cool delineated outline look and shapes. Um, it's an, a kind of illustration I've been trying to do some and let's see make sure I don't you guys can still yep okay everything's still being heard um, and it's just it, and it's a combination not only you can tell how old it is because look at if you see this picture here let me pull it up closely so you can kind of see what that is it is a uh, video player like a VCR yeah so you can tell that there's and there's a calculator <laughs> and an old telephone oh yeah it's a little bit um, that's that's an old stereo oh, it's got a tape deck in it like a cassette tape deck how cool is that dated but it's fun let's see oh 1993. So Bryn was born in 88. So I got this for her when she was like five. My odds and ends, Uncle Mo. That's what it's for. Because Bryn was very much like this. And the art is done. Uh, oh, the illustrations are rendered in gouache, acrylic, pencil, photographs, and household objects. <laughs> I love that. <clears throat> Odds and ends, Alvy. Alvy Flynn sat in the back row of Mrs. Potter's class. Alvy never said much, but the other kids liked to gather around his desk anyway, just to watch what he was doing. Mm -hmm. That's because Alvy was always inventing things. Whenever he finished a school assignment, he'd reach behind his desk for a cardboard box he kept filled with odds and ends. Then he'd start assembling the odds and ends into all kinds of strange new inventions. It was no wonder he was known around the school as Odds and Ends Albie. Get a couple pictures there. One day, Alvy reached into his cardboard box and began attaching odds and ends to the desk itself. His best friends, Ethan and Tammy, exchanged puzzled looks. Alvy had made hundreds of inventions, but he had never done anything like this. Since Alvy never said much, though, Ethan and Tammy simply scratched their heads and waited to see what would happen. to just double check something sound here. 
There we go. Yeah, okay. There. When Alvy had finished, his desk looked very, very different. Look at all the stuff he's got on it. As Ethan and Tammy and the rest of Alvy's classmates stood around admiring Alvy's unusual new desk, the recess bell rang. But instead of getting in line to go to the playground, Alvy grabbed hold of the handle that dangled from the, his desk by a short piece of rope, and he gave the handle a swift tug. The desk jerked suddenly, then began to shake. It coughed. It sputtered. It burped. With a soft click, Alvy buckled the seatbelt across his waist. He reached around the side of his desk and cupped his hand over a long lever, taking a deep breath. He pulled the lever slowly toward himself. All at once, a giant roar filled the room. Look out, yelled Ethan. And with a loud squeal of rubber, Alvy and his desk lunged forward and sped down the aisle. Alvy steered his desk frantically through the room, honking with his horn. Beep, beep. Students dove for cover. Alvy careened around a table, nearly toppling the fish tank. And before anyone knew it, Alvy was out the door, shifting gears wildly as he raced down the hall. Uh-oh. At the far end of the building stood Mr. Stone, the school principal. Mr. Stone spent most of his time telling students not to run in the halls. When he spotted Alvy speeding toward him, he held up his palms and announced, Alvy Flynn, this hallway is for walking only. Alvy tried to veer out of the way, but he was just going too fast. Mr. Stone was flung from his feet and sent somersaulting onto his rear end. Alvy shot through the hallway door and zoomed out onto the playground. Alvy raced across the blacktop, dodging the sandbox and the swings and the games of hopscotch and foursquare. The first grade teachers chased after him, blowing their whistles furiously. But the time, but by the time they caught up to where he, they'd last seen him, Alvy was screeching out the playground and into the street. Cars skidded and brakes squealed. And drivers turned their heads to gape at as Alvy whizzed by. Strolling citizens scurried like startled rabbits, and Alvy rounded a curve and sped down the hill. Beep, beep! Baba Boom Underwear Company Unlimited. <laughs> On the next block, by the big orange caution sign three city workers stared down into an open manhole they were hard at work trying to decide who would get to climb down the hole first uh, you go first said one of the workers i'm afraid of the dark no you go first said another worker there might be alligators swimming around in the bottom no you go first said the third worker it smells funny down there the three workers looked up and saw Alvy hurtling toward them. Me first, they all yelled at once, and a loud splash sounded from deep in the ground as Alvy zoomed by overhead. <laughs> now, down the road, a strong man was lifting weights in a second floor gym. He stood by the window as he grunted so people on the street below could admire his gigantic muscles. Beep, beep! The strong man caught a glimpse of Alvy's desk zipping by. 
The strong man was so astonished, he let go of the dumbbell in his hand and it landed smack on his big toe. Ouch, 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 yelled the big strong man, hopping around on one foot. Earthquake, earthquake, yelled the people downstairs as the building trembled from all the hopping. <laughs> Alvy kept going. Suddenly, from up ahead, came the rumble of motorcycles. A gang of bikers was swarming out of an alley, like bats from a cave. They fanned out in formation, filling three lanes as they headed down the avenue. One of the bikers glanced over his shoulder at Alvy and snarled. Alvy reached down and tightened his seatbelt. Alvy barreled through the motorcycles like a bowling ball, scattering ten pins. Rasping engines and grinding gears drowned out the bikers' confused shouts, and the air grew thick with burning rubber and oily exhaust. After him, hollered the leader of the gang. Scowls on their faces, the bikers gunned the throttles and stormed down the streets. The angry growl of their engines grew louder and louder. They were closing in on Alvy. Alvy clenched a fist around the lever. When the first motorcycle was so close it was nearly touching him, Alvy gave the lever a yank. There was a sudden roar, and Alvy shot forward and rocketed down the road. Hey! Where can we get some wheels like that? <laughs> Alvy darted around a narrow side street, then finally began to slow down. He coasted to a stop, leaving his engine running. He bounded up the stairs of number 87 and rattled a key in the front door lock. Alvy pushed open the door and ran down the hallway into the kitchen. There, taped to the refrigerator, was a handwritten message on a small square of paper. Dear Alvy, I'm off to work early. Don't forget to feed Boris before you leave for school. Love, Mom. A basset hound puppy scampered into the kitchen, wagging his tail and whimpering at Alvy. Alvy crouched down and scratched the dog behind the ears. Then he grabbed a box of food from the cupboard and shook some into the dog's empty bowl. He batted, patted Boris once more on the head, then dashed out the door and jumped behind the wheel. Off went Alvy again, picking up speed, snaking through traffic, gobbling up the miles of the road, and suddenly ahead flashed the blinking red lights of a railroad crossing. Train passing, they warned. Alvy slammed on his brakes, but he couldn't stop in time. As the distance shrank between Alvy and the thundering train, he grabbed the lever with both hands and pulled it with all his might. The desk lunged forward, and Alvy was thrown back in his seat. Ah and then the desk took off into the air. Alvy soared high above the ground, past the treetops, beyond the roofs of the tallest buildings. In the distance, he spotted his school. Nudging the lever forward, Alvy banked his desk across the sky and headed in for a landing. He glided down onto the playground, cruised across the blacktop to the building, and chugged down the long hall. Finally reaching the entrance to his classroom, he turned through the doorway and rolled to a stop in the back row. Cheers and applause erupted from the class. Ethan and Tammy dropped their books and rushed up to their friends. Alvy, they exclaimed, you're back! And Alvy looked up with surprise. Well, of course I'm back, he said quietly. Recess is over, isn't it? And with that, Alvy began taking apart his invention 
and putting the odds and ends back into the box. And that is odds and ends, Alvy. <laughs> hey, hi, Larry. So what'd you think of that? That's pretty crazy. <laughs> I wonder, it's one of the favorites that she had. She loved that book when she was little and doing all the kind of things. And all the pictures that it's made, like this one, this frame is made out of like upholstery nails and then other kind of nails around. Oh, that kind of stuff. I loved all how the pictures, oh, I wasn't showing you the frame. I'm sorry. The cover, see on that? There's the upholstery tacks and then other kind of little nails that make the, the framing and all the different kind of things it did. All the different pictures that he put together, the collaging, the motorcycle guys are funny. This one has this guy walking, like a, a photograph of somebody actually walking down the street. He fit it in. I just love how he did this. Great fun. Ha <sighs> ha, yay. I needed a good laugh today. Good, Tamara. <sighs> Story is a lot of fun. Glamping with the grands. Oh, that's fun. Yay. Yay. So Larry, you missed it earlier on. I'm moving Sunday to Monday, story time, Sunday story time to Monday. Cause I'm going to be over at a reunion on day Island with my high school buddies. Um, and they just kind of just found out about it yesterday. And so I, I was like, Oh, cause we had to cancel it once before. Cause somebody got sick. It was in 2021 and there was, they were worried. And then Feels better now, so the family's all good, and we're all, Katie's coming down, my friend from high, these are all high school buddies, so this will be, there's like 15 of us going to be there, it'll be a good time, so chances of making it back in time for, and getting everything done are pretty nil, so I'm going to move to Monday for just this coming week, and we'll do share and tell on Monday, I know um, I have something from Madonna she sent, because she didn't know I wasn't going to be, I did a premiere. How'd that premiere go? Did it go okay with you guys? I hope it was. Glamping with the grands. Um, just this one. No, I have another story today. I have a, one called The Squiggle. Now, this one is a book that I've had for a long time. Peer Morgan. Um, gosh, I've known Peer since... I think she came to our school when I was still teaching my first school. I met her, oh my gosh, early on. And um, I don't think I've read this one. But And Carol Alexa Schaefer is, was, uh, used to live in Woodenville and Pierre lived in Kirkland, I think. And, um, but it's, the book was done in 1996. So I guess it's not. And it's done with Beryl Prismacolor markers and Windsor Newton gouache on 80 pound, 100% recycled oatmeal speckle tone paper from France. Yes. So this is a book called The Squiggle. And again, it's that whole using uh, line and changing how the words fit. Um, yeah, I, I think I did read another one about shape. Oh, I read those all those shapes ones. But this one I think is is one and she this has a really um she uses again uses dark ink outline in the um illustrations and for the for the kids and the whole thing and then the font is very pretty. It's got a, a really beautiful kind of Asian aspect to it, but it's just, it's just really cool. So this one's called The Squiggle. Let me show you right here. It is by, whoa, let me do this. Change this, it can be smaller. There we go. It's by Carol Alexa Schaefer and illustrated by Pierre Morgan. Pierre's done a lot of books and she's just always been um, 
a favorite author and illustrator of mine in so many different ways, but I think you'll like it. Let me move this, move me up here. Yay. Yes, the squiggle. And it's especially for Bryn, Magical Squiggler. Hooray, hooray. December 8th, 1996. Pierre and Carol Alexis Schaefer, they both. Um, Pierre always has a, uh, a chop that she puts in. And that's hers. And then there's Carol did hers for this. The squiggle. I love the use of the oatmeal colored paper on this. I think it really adds to it. And she used Barrel Prismacolor coloring pencils, colored pencils, and then gouache. So it, it just makes a really pretty kind of mm, combination. I like the, the lines in it. And then you can see the beautiful font. My teacher says, time to walk to the park. So as always, off we go in a bunched up, slow, tight, straight line. I am last. No one else sees what I see on the sidewalk. I grab it. Slither, slish. It could be the dance of a big scaly dragon. dragon. Or push a pat the top of a long, great wall. Snap, ta-da! Maybe it's the path of a circus acrobat. Or... Crack, crickle, hiss. The sky trail of popping fireworks. Tug. Kaboom! It might be the poof of a stormy thundercloud. Or... Ripple shh, the circle of a deep, still pool. Or even... Ah, whoosh! The rise of the full fat moon. Not so far ahead, I see my teacher and my class shuffling along. Wait, I call, look! Everyone turns around. I show the dragon, the wall, the acrobat, the fireworks, the storm cloud, the pool, and the moon. Everyone is smiling. Hooray! They cheer and grab on too. Then off we go to the park in our slither, slish, push a pat, snap, ta da! Crackle, crickle, hiss, tug, kaboom, ripple, shh, uh, whoosh, squiggle of a line. And that's the story of the squiggle. Yeah. And, you know, getting your tacos on. So much has been happening. Time to do art either. I know. I, I finished my art drawing class the other day. And I did 
I did a drawing and I didn't use, we were doing, we were doing, um, let me go back here. So that's, that's this. So what'd you think of that one? I like the art. I love this, this, of course, you know, me and dragons. This is one of my favorite dragons ever. And just with the little lines and how she did that, the colors, so cool. And this whole outline bit. So nice. Balancing the teacups on her head. My goodness. There we go. All right. Um, yes. The book, they are awesome. Uh, this first one stole your heart. Yes. Yes, it did. Um, I have one more I could read. It's not, doesn't fit with the theme, but it's another one that I swiped from the kids. And it's the one I read to them. It's a, it's a nice story. If you guys have time. Editing for my YouTube thingy. Oh, story and art on Monday. Yes. Yes. Send send the artwork off for on Monday. Um, yeah, so this book, well, you know what? I think I'll save this one. This is a completely different kind of book. Yeah, yeah, this is a completely different kind of book. Anyway, I think that's it. That's going to be. So for artwork, I, I kind of grabbed these two books because of the word shapes and how they use them and the to ideas and then how the little squiggle just from a squiggle I'm gonna try to challenge myself to do some more um, I, I in my figure drawing class yesterday rather than doing or where we go did figure draw, rather than trying to use charcoal and be precise which intimidates me I just took watercolor and I did basic shapes that was kind of fun to do my regular drawing class, which I had the last class, uh, we've been doing, we were working on perspective on the last couple times and oh my gosh, that just kind of bleh, made my head go bonkers. Um, oh, and so it, it was okay. It, it turned out okay. Um, and, um, so I got through it. And I did okay. I was fine with that. Tamara, I see you said that you need to work out the music thing and you're not sure how it works yet. So the easiest thing to do if you're on your YouTube is to use the YouTube music that's built in. I know it doesn't mean you get to use popular music or the stuff that's out there on the radio, but you won't get a copyright strike. And you can choose just their stuff and it, you can just put it right into... Um, you can add the music in and it is, um, let me show you here on YouTube studio and we will go here. Boop, boop. Let me just show if that's the wrong thing. I'll go to source screen share, screen share there. Okay. So here you see this. All right. Down here, you can go to content. I think it's content. Oh, here, down here, audio library. So this audio library. So all of this music that's in here is approved on YouTube. And they have a, a fair amount. There's more. I mean, there's a whole lot more. I'm just rows on a page. I have 30 rows on a page. You could do up to hundred rows on a page. And if I do a hundred rows on a page, I can't figure out how many, and, uh, there's like 1400 pages. So there's, yeah, there's 14,000 different pieces of music on YouTube, sound effects, any kind of stuff you want like that too. So, um, here, let me do this. Let's switch this to camera B. There we go. Okay. So all you can sort it, you can put a filter on it here 
So you can search by genre, mood, the duration. So if you want a full song, you can choose that. And you can add any of this to your YouTube video and not worry about a copyright strike and not have to get a separate outside um, um, licensing. Like I have audio.io, I think it is, and I pay for that because I use so many different kinds. And then in Canva, you have to have a pro license. Uh, in Canva, you have to connect. When you use something out of Canva, you have to connect the song that you, you choose for your Canva, like whatever new, you have to connect your YouTube channel to it. This is far simpler and it's just direct. So you can upload and then add the music in, I think pretty much so. Or you can, the other, the easiest way to do, to do it is you can choose something and download it and attach it, put it on your, on your, as a soundtrack on your video of whatever you're doing. But it works really well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it, you can't, if you turn on like Spotify or you turn on your record or your things, um, those people that you'll see on different YouTubes that do that, um, they are using a short amount of time. They might've gotten a, an agreement with somebody that they can do that, or they have a licensing agreement. But, uh, if, if you use, let me go back to this. So the copyright, uh, they'll say, and, and it, as long, if you use music that is, uh, not in public domain, that is popular music that's copyrighted. <clears throat> they pick that up really quickly. It doesn't take more than a couple, like uh, like a few seconds, five seconds for them to pick out, and they'll they'll put it out there. So if you if you keep it on there, okay, YouTube will not say anything because your if your channel's not monetized. But the second your channel becomes monetized, if ever, then that any YouTube, any channel that has had a copyright claim put on it, any, any, any video that's had a copyright claim put on it will not be able to be monetized. Or if it is, the monetization will go to the people who've made the copyright claim. So it's just easier all the way around when you're doing it, like just kind of starting out like this just to use YouTube music. That's what I did probably for my first hundred videos. Easy. Yeah. And it, it, you know, it works. So, woo. Anyway. Yay. Okay. Anyway, you guys, that's that for tonight. Uh, so Sunday, do something different. Maybe try doing a squiggle if you want to. I'm going to try some free form stuff. I'll show my other things for, for Monday. I mean, but, um, hopefully these two books gave you some inspiration. I mean, even if it's maybe putting odds and ends together, building stuff that odds and ends Alvi, I, it was kind of the, uh, an inspiration I used in my classroom for the kids. Cause I had a, um, take apart box and, uh, and I literally, I had pieces old, I would go to Goodwill and I would buy, um, old mechanical things and like a, a mixer or, uh, an old stereo or old record, play, anything that fit. And I would cut the cord off and then the box had, um, screwdrivers and hammers and the kids could take them apart and then build things with them. Oh my gosh. They had so much fun. So who knows, maybe build a collage kind of stuff. Linda's done that. She's, I still have my beautiful collage that she did over there uh, from Africa. And then, you know, Larry puts all kinds of wonderful things together. You see it on his channel. Everybody does all, lots of people do. And you guys are all just, so I've seen Janice do things and Tamara does all kinds of collage. You guys, yeah, you guys are just so creative. 
I've been kind of in a slump with my drawing and I'm trying to push myself back there and I've been in a real slump with my photography, which is like making me crazy, but I'm, I'm getting there. I'll, I'll bust through this. We'll bust through this together. Okay, guys, that's enough of me babbling on and, um, I will be back on, uh, Monday. And I'll let you know how the reunion went. It ought to be pretty fun to see. And doing a channel, I'll just enjoy everyone else's. We'll all out block your upload. Yes. Yeah. Some, some artists will all out block your upload. The reason is, uh, Tamara, um, because there, it, it's the same. Think of it this way, Tamara, is this, if somebody saw your things, your artwork and took, took it, took pictures of it and then turned around and made prints of it and sold it as their own. That's kind of the same thing that the artists who have the music feel. This is their music. They've done this and, and it's definitely copyrighted. Um, it's one of the reasons that this part of my, the storybook part of my channel will never be monetized and I, I don't want it to be. That's not the thing that I've set that up to not monetize it because I'm reading books and showing the pictures that these are somebody else's books. Yes, I give them credit and all that stuff. But if probably if somebody wanted to, if, if one of the, the authors wanted to come back and say, hey, you know, take down your video, I would have to take down the video. Um, but... I doubt that's going to happen because I, they see a lot more people seeing the books this way that children's books authors are not quite the same that way. But music is one of those things that, that the artists definitely keep um, under tabs because they don't want people copying it. And that's, that's the royalties that they get from it. Um, yeah. Um, yes, that's what happened to Fiona. Yes. Um, that did happen to Fiona. She had some stuff of hers stolen and um, pictures taken and sold on. Yeah, it's it's happens. I, I've I've seen it happen with um, photographers that I know that are well known, famous authors, uh, art photographers, and their work shows up in somebody else's on a website or on somebody else's video and stuff like that. And it's like, hey, did you know? And they're like, what? <laughs> no. So. You just have to, I, I just look at it as a, I'm going to, I'm going to do my best to go out there. And if there's a, a vehicle I can use that the, all the, all the artists that are on the YouTube, um, audio library <clears throat> have all been licensed through YouTube to be able to be available to any YouTube channel out there that has one. And that's that kind of thing that they do. So that's another way to do that. So anyway, so I'm going to support that when I can and yeah, I'll worry about it. Just do what we do because I think it's just about putting the good vibe out there, all those crazy good vibes and what we do and to fill our buckets and fill your buckets and fill everybody else's buckets and just, yeah, let's make it good. Make it good and show yourself. I'm excited, Tamara, to see your things out there. That's going to be extraordinary. And anybody else got, um, hey, Lupe. Um, yeah, Lupe, you can do it to some point, but on shorts, you can use really cool music without problems to a point. Um, if your shorts are usually shorter than 30 seconds there. It, I would not, I I've known people who, ha, who have their channels monetized that their shorts are not being monetized because they used other kind of music. So, um, if that's the type of thing. So anyway, I just play what I want and there's an issue. I changed the tune. Exactly. Yeah. You can do that also. All right, you guys, 
Ah, Lupe, it's good to have you here. Thank you. Less than 60 seconds. I know that's, that, that shorts have to be less than 60 seconds, but the limit on, on most um, ability to use like um, general music, popular music, like on Instagram, they'll only let you use one of their clips for 30 seconds. And then if you try to post that onto to, uh, YouTube, sometimes that will get taken off. It's just, it's always an interesting thing to, to follow up. If you really want to know, go, to, I mean, it's, uh, everybody for, this is for everybody with YouTube, uh, the YouTube channel itself about the YouTube information channel. What is that called? Larry, do you remember what that's called? Where they always tell you, is it the creator channel? Um, Um, to, oh, what's it called? I can't remember what it's called. Um, there's a channel that YouTube actually has. It's their own YouTube and, and it, it's their information. Anytime they have updates, they, um, YouTube, what's it called? Uh, yeah, it's called, uh, I think it's called YouTube Creators. And it has the uh, all the basics and any kind of the new things that they came up with and how to do things. And so you can always check on there because they do videos on all that kind of stuff. And you can find out what they've got. All right, you guys, I'm going to let you go because I'm going to go upstairs and see what Bob's been doing. We didn't get very much further on the... Uh, shed, but that's because we were gone. We had a great time though with the grandkids and that's awesome. Larry, I'm glad you guys are out having fun. Say hi to Angie for us all. Lupe, thanks for stopping in. Tamara, Linda, Janice, Larry, who else was here? Angie was listening in. Anyway, oh, so everybody that's here, thanks so much for being here. It just made my night. It's a great great way to have Thursday and my energy you guys give me my energy back it's been sluggish since I got back and I'm really happy um, to have been here tonight and share these books with you and I will be back on Monday with more stories and art and send your stuff in and I would be excited to see it and share it but until next time everybody have a great week and keep looking for the beauty hidden in plain sight. It's all around. And the first place you'll find it will be by looking in your mirror. Then you give yourself a high five. I'll see you next time, everybody. In the heat of the night, we could Lost in all the lights and sounds Feeling alright We won't go home We will just stay here downtown There's not just stars on the boulevard They're in the light in your eyes Oh, we don't need no black cards I just need you back Looking like a mom
you by me.